Welcome to the post-election analysis by mm. Vincent Wong and Andrew Work, uh, both founders yeah. of Solution Wheels and Harper Times. That's right. And good morning, editor in chief. Uh, long morning, over Solutions and Wheels. <laughs> hey, long overdue analysis because um, Andrew uh, met the Prime Minister of Canada for yes. The past two days, but yeah. um, well, I didn't meet him for the past two days, but yeah, he was in town for a couple of days. So I did get yeah. to say hello. Anyway, pictures, uh, all, right. all good, great guy. Long story short, I I'm actually glad to do this on Thursday because people was uh, were trying to rush to some conclusion uh, yeah. since Monday evening, and mm. we got some time to do some really um, deep thinking. Or quality analysis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of, well of, of three things to yeah. summarize. Uh, first of all, I think is about the Democrats. I think uh, what Andrew said that mm. is uh, because he is right. That's why he is wrong. It's yeah. very philosophical. Why mm. you are right and then you are wrong. Okay. So let's get in. So for those of you who are regular watchers, you know that leading up to this, yep. <clears throat> and if you read uh, stuff that we write and, and put on Harvard Times, you know that I was very strongly of the opinions that Democrats were going to get slaughtered all over the place for running too many candidates. So what happens on the Friday before the election? They finally start listening to us, and a lot of their people, they you know get together and say, okay, that's it. Our low, uh, the, the guys that are not going to do well, the ones that are almost certainly not going to win, but are certainly going to siphon votes away from other pan-democratic contenders, they're going to quit. And so we saw, uh, you know, a bunch of announcements, uh, people just saying, "I get it, we're out." Uh, Paul Zimmerman's was the one that I watched. He did a live Facebook chat thing. Yeah, but the whole thing is out. the whole thing is still risky because they yeah. were still on the tickets. Yes, they announced that they are quit. Uh, they have quitted, but still, their heads. They're still on the ticket. Well, they're still on the ticket. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're still risks involved. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it created a huge amount of confusion. Like, I mean, they should have they should have had this worked out months ago. Yeah. And just not run the candidates. But we've talked about how the democratic discipline fell apart. And so or even the if they have been, uh, even if they have been uh, into the gates. Yep. Even if they have been entered into the gates, they should have done this at least a month ago. Yeah, not the Friday before. So Saturday. I not got, two days ago. <laughs> I get, I get people calling me all day Saturday. Well, who's running? Who's not? Who should I vote for? I was yeah. going to vote for this guy. But I mean, if they if they done it, let's say three weeks ago, yeah, then at least the other horses, yeah, would have a much better uh, lead time to reshape the campaign and and have reshape a more campaign. comfortable get, lead and yeah, all and, that, and get the word out so people knew what they were doing. So first of all, we were right, and I think the Democrats finally listened to us. I don't know. Was anybody else saying? Was anybody saying that in the Chinese media? They must have been. I couldn't have been the only one that thought of that. Uh, well, but anyway. So anyways, I'm sure they finally got the message. I, I think. To the and it worked. And it worked. I think it's not working as good as they think. What I would do yep. if I were the strategist, of yep. course I'm not. But if I, if I were the strategist, mm -hmm. I would ask everyone who is trying to quit on Friday yeah. to come together in one place. <laughs> We are the quitters. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. We quit because we care. It, it would be the, the Regco Suicide Squad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put them all in one room. Yeah, for, for maximum mileage. So people can have one photo and you can all know. Don't vote for these guys. Yeah, at least. That's, they, that's the new and, plan. And they can hold the, uh, the respective region in yeah. front of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, not like prisoners, but uh, they, they, yeah. they should have done that. Yeah, so then they can have maximum well, mileage on that. Given the last minute nature of it, I'm sure planning wasn't exactly, you know, long term and, and deeply pondered for a long time. So, so I still criticize them. So, we, so I think we were still kind of right. But because they changed what they did, and frankly, to their credit, I think it worked. I think that more people got elected. The question is, could they have gotten even more people elected if they had have had the discipline and not run so many candidates in the first place? On I the, think they could have. I think on, they could have even more. Yeah. On the other hand, I. I I put in a opposite arguments okay. against that. I think somehow the pro-establishment knows that they are um, fighting an uphill battle this time. Right. So they have taken a very conservative strategy. Yes. A typical example is the Hong Kong Island. Okay. I mean, DAB. Yep. Yeah. DAB. They instead of having two very strong candidates last time. Yeah. Uh, Tree Roots Jung. Yeah. And also uh, the. Ex-president of the Legislative Council, Jasper Zhang. Yep. 
Actually, they have a huge lead, right? Right. But they run a relatively uh, weak candidate, mm -hmm. but who has been in uh, the Central and Western District for so long. Yeah. Uh, uh, people call him Mr. Penguin. Oh, yeah. Got one. Yeah, yeah. All right. So instead of sending two candidates, they mm -hmm. just send out one. Yeah. And so that the FKU, the labor unions, mm -hmm. can have another candidate. Yeah. And then uh, Regina Yip is the third candidate. Right. Ricky Wong is the wild card. card. <coughs> Ricky Wong is the yeah. wild card. But yeah. they just want to secure those three candidates, yeah. right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, those yeah. three candidates went in smoothly. All that through, no problem. Yeah. But all with more or less 40,000 something. Yeah, votes. Yeah. So that's that's the whole idea, right? They yes. they play a very conservative approach. Well, Virginia, yeah, sixty. Yeah. I mean, there was. I mean, the the, 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 the 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 other two candidates, the yeah, FDA yeah, candidates, yeah. and also the DAB candidates, both have forty something. Yeah, forty-one yeah. and forty-two thousand. Yeah. Virginia is almost forty. Virginia almost people 46. expect. Virginia yeah. people expect her to win more votes, but uh, at really? the end of the day, is sixty something. It is what it is. But, yeah. But the key point is, I don't. I think the Democrats could have win more seats. However, if you really look at the candidates' uh, political affiliation, yep. except Wang Guoheng, yep. most of the pro-establishment candidates actually won. Actually won. Yeah. yeah. Actually won. So I won't say the pro-establishment camp loses. Yeah. I will still say the pan-democrats can get more seats. But on the other hand, it's the more radical, the localists. Get the yeah. Seats. Well, I mean, you know, the real, the real wild card. Well, you know, okay. So we see, we see, uh, the, uh, we're talking about Hong Kong Island, right? So Nathan Law got a, a whopping almost fifty-one thousand votes. Um, but the Next, question is, yeah. where, where would Ricky, if Ricky Wong wasn't in there? And frankly, you know, that'll come to our second topic, which will be strategic voting. Um, if Ricky Wong wasn't in there, where would his votes have gone? Like, would Sid Ho? I don't think so. Eh, maybe. I mean, who didn't get elected? That but was you, close. you see, I think Ricky Wong was is always a marginal. Uh, candidates, yeah, as always, a marginal candidate. Because if you watch our last series, I would say I don't think Ricky Wong is, is going to win. Uh, you say he has a very high chance. So the polls were suggesting yeah. that he was so, going to go. So I, I, I always yeah. say I always say Ricky was on the verge. Mm. But instead of Sid Ho goes in, yeah, you got Law gets in as the youngest candidates as the younger legislators in Hong Kong's history. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think. With that in mind, then I would say Pan Democrats actually lose the votes to the younger, more radical, with yeah, yeah, sure. uh, yeah <coughs> local, local okay. uh, political, localist political agendas in mind. Yeah, instead of Sid Ho wins, Law wins. So yeah, yeah. Well, oh, okay. So there's there's that. So there's a first. So if they do not listen you know, to you, who pulled and who did? Yeah, yeah. If they do not listen to you, yeah, I would say the radicals can actually may win more votes. And even more seats could, in some districts could have been. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like the Democrats instead of losing to the pro-establishment in the past, they lose to the other side of the aisle, the more radicals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although you know, yes. Gen <laughs> generally, yes. And the one caveat I will put on that um, is um, Paul Zimmerman. I agree. So he was one of the guys who yeah. withdraw. He wanted to be the Civic Party candidate yeah. for Hong Kong Island, and they said no. So Paul, he the yeah. Party, Paul, and then he, yeah, he pulled out. Who yeah. did he, who yeah, did he yeah, say yeah. to support? Paul Zimmerman, mm -hmm. actually. Not the pandemic. He went with Nathan Law. Oh, yes. yes. He, he but, said in his video, but, I like Nathan Law. Yeah, but having said that, yeah. <clears throat> the withdrawal of Paul Zimmerman yeah. indirectly, yeah. indirectly saved Tanya. Yeah. Indirectly oh, yeah, saved yeah, Tanya. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there used to be some hardcore Civic Party supporters yeah, for who loves Paul Zimmerman. Sure, sure. And those hardcore voters may not go for law. Yeah. At the end of the day, those votes may go to Tanya, which makes her a, a, a tiny margin yeah. to win over Ricky. Yeah. She's 35,400, 35, and Ricky is down here with 33,323. Yeah. So less, less than 1,000. Yeah. A little bit more than 1,000. A little bit more than 1,000. A little bit more than 1,000. For Tanya, yeah, I think it's a big defeat for her. Sorry, 35. I'm looking at the Democrat. Yeah, yeah. A, little, a little bit. For Tanya Chen, it's, it's, it's a big defeat because yeah. of her popularity in the past. Nah. She got the votes <clears throat> even less than 40,000. Yeah. If Paul Zimmerman did not quit 
Yeah. Then Tanya may be out and Ricky may be in. Okay. Well, there's something to that. that I agree with that. that. That goes to two, two, two other topics I want to cover today. Uh, one is strategic voting and one is uh, business. Yeah. So which one do you want? Let's go with strategic voting. Yes, first. of course. Okay. So first of all, we talked about the Democratic game plan and their withdrawal. So that's fine. And obviously it worked for them, but it could have been even better. Number one. Number two, let's talk about the other thing with strategic voting. So Benny Tai reveals Thundergo, not Thundercats, but Thundergo on the morning of the election, which is like, we have to be efficient with it. It was basically the Democratic strategic voting plan. And he's like, oh, these people are going to get in for sure. Everybody vote for this. And between that just kind of made everything go crazy. In the super seats, everyone's like, oh, James Toe, he's a shoe in. Vote for Roy Kwong because he needs your help. Roy Kwong ended up demolishing. Uh, not demolishing because they both got elected, but I mean, picking up so many more votes than James Till. All these weird results came out because it was just <clears throat> piles of strategic voting. We talked about Ricky Wong not going through because so many people were like, oh, Rick, Ricky's a shoe in. I'm going to vote for somebody else on the, on the margin. It was just piles of that. And I don't know, I, I really, you know, this is like when strategic voting got broken. We did some analysis before in past elections. The voting, the strategic voting factor, uh, our, our analysts figured out was about 5%, 6%, depending on what you're looking at. Here, when the analysis comes back, it's going to be huge. You know what? My take yeah. is that the Thunder whatever. Yeah, the Thunder Go plan. Yeah. yeah. It's actually... Thunder Go, I love it. <laughs> actually, I think it's a Thunder in the stomach. <laughs> okay. And at the end of the day, it becomes diarrhea for the pandemocrats. Mm. Full of. Lovely, <laughs> lovely scatological <laughs> analogy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but, but why? The problem is why? The, 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 the essence of a strategy, yeah. the essence of a strategy, is that people coordinate it with an objective. That's right. a strategy, right? Yes. The basic definition of, uh, of a strategy is that you know where you are, yeah. you know where to go, sure. and you think of a game plan to go from point A to point B. That's sure. strategy, right? Was, yeah. But all strategy depends on coordination. Right. And I would say the localists and the more radicals uh, voters yep. and the younger voters, mm. they do not necessarily go according to plan. So some of the people go according to plan, right? while the other people mm. does not go according to plan. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you, you then know. at the end of the day, the winner yeah. would be the localist because people who try to coordinate think that they have to vote for the radicals. Right. But on the other hand, the hardcore voters of the radicals, they don't go for the yeah. coordinated approach. Yeah. So at the end of the day, Benny Ties actually help the radicals and the localists. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Could That's be. my I take. Mean, I mean, That's yeah. my take. I mean, strategic voting you know, went to new heights. People were trying to do it. I mean, but it tells you a couple of things. People in Hong Kong are super uh, interested in the results. Uh, you know, voter turnout was high. And the strategic 58%, historical high. Yeah, and I mean, the voter, th this, this strategic voting tells you that people are thinking very carefully about how to make the best use of the vote. And what CNN called last week, they had a headline that was like, Are Hong Kong's elections the world's weirdest elections? Something along those lines. It was basically making the point. I would say like, yes. This is a weird system. I would say yes. So people, <laughs> people are trying to figure it out. They're trying to do the right thing and, and get the right results. So that's strategic voting. So that was the second thing I wanted to talk about today. Third. Uh, business. Well, but no, no, uh, do I want to come to business after that? Yeah, we'll come to business and then we'll talk about power. <laughs> So business, so I wrote my kind of piece, nobody else, you know, I, Hong Kong is a business city. This is like, you know, the capital of capitalism. Uh, it's a city about free markets, but when you look at our LegCo elections, I mean, you get a real sense of where people's appreciation of where power lies, because nobody talked about how they were going to improve Hong Kong's business environment. The, only, the exceptions to that were Ricky Wong, uh, you've got, two, uh, talking about geographical, you've got two BPA candidates, uh, sorry, you've got one BPA candidate, right? Liberal Party ran two geographical oh, one. two candidates in one two candidates yeah in, in, in one district and then Ken Chow in like, the same in the same list freaked out and went away to London and today it came out that he got threatened by some guys if you did not count Ken Chow yeah, yeah. because he, he freaked out yeah and, and Paul quit Paul Chia is kind of a whack is kind of an independent I'd call him a uh, kind of a pro market business guy and then you've got Michael Tin but I mean that's it by and large, everybody running for LegCo in the geographical constituencies and most of the functional are way left. I would, as a free market guy, I would say like their idea of government is that they want to use it to change things, to regulate, to constrain, to redistribute wealth, and that is our LegCo now. However, however, that is our LegCo. However, from a solution-based 
journalism point of view. Okay. I'm actually uh, less worried mm -hmm. about what you have just said. Okay. You know what? In the past, you got Patrick Fong. Yep. And uh, you got Sid Ho. Sid Ho, Lee Chuck Yan. Sure, sure. Who are more uh, compromising yep. when it comes to policy benefiting the grassroots. Right. So the government or the officials or the bureaucrats yes. at least can have some some sort of communications yeah. with Sid Ho, with Lee Chuck Yan. Yeah. Uh, to to try to come up with a deal that that could benefit both the grassroots without hurting the economy. Right. So they can strike the deal. Mm -hmm. With the radicals and the localists. Yeah. Replacing Sid Ho, replacing Lee Chuck Yan. Yeah. And replacing Frederick Fong. Yeah. They are not going to compromise with the government right. on policies. Okay. Uh, related to helping the grassroots, related to the general welfare of the people. And the government knows that too. All bureaucrats mm. are scared to actually negotiate with, with, with the more radical forces, right? Yeah, but there's six of them. Yeah, I know. Oh, 70. Yeah. yeah. Which means, <clears throat> yeah. which means, as a former bureaucrat, you know what I'm going to do? Okay. What's, what would be the plan as a former AO? What would you do? Okay. Just hold what we have right now. Yeah. Don't think about welfare policy for the time being. Yeah. Because we are getting nowhere. Right. With the radicals. So, so yeah. actually, yeah. the yeah. results, mm -hmm. you have a more radicalized legislative council. Yeah. Actually will force the government become more conservative and be and actually indirectly become more right wing okay we are not going to help we are not going to help the, the welfare uh, we are not going to help the grassroots that easily now right now when you say when you but say we, but we still want to do something right so the next best option mm -hmm. for the administration yep would be to help the small and medium enterprises okay because it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's more popular with it's them. more actually it's yeah. more achievable Mm -hmm. than meeting the demands yeah. of the radicals. Right. So from a solution-based point of view, you've got a more radicalized slash code who force the government to to halt, to yeah. put a halt on some of the welfare policy yeah. and shift their attention and also the resources to the commercial sector. That's right. how I think. Okay. Of course, it will be difficult. Yeah. It will still be difficult mm -hmm. for them to pass to the Legislative Council. Yeah. But at but my take is that the government will just basically give up to force through yeah. more welfare policy because it is more difficult than ever. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually a cause and effect, action yeah. and reaction. Yeah. Because in the past, if you have, let's say, uh, Lee Chuck Yan and Sit sure, sure. support, yeah. you, at least you can have a hope that you can strike a deal. But yeah. now, yeah, the cost of all hopes are out. So, mm -hmm. all right, I'll, I'll just give up. I, I will work on the business sectors because the business sectors. I worry about the last coast, so they are more willing to talk to us now. Yes. Well, here's here's my problem with the business sector. All right. So even my problem with the business sector is that they, you know, when you look at the fact that they didn't really run any candidates, like yeah. I said, aside from the couple of the two or three that I mentioned just now, um, it's like they've given up. That's my problem. Is so they they've got their nice little functional constituencies, and they go in and they kind of look out for their own functional constituency, but that gives them no power. You know, when was the last time the business? Related LegCo members came together to fight for a policy, like gathered together. Is there any such thing as a so business? So that's your point like, on power, right? Never. No, the point the business community has given yeah. up on LegCo okay. completely. They have their functional constituencies. But if I'm textiles and garments, you know, I'm Felix Chung for textiles and garments. Like, really, I mean, <laughs> it's such a narrow niche. You never see the broader business guys coming together to say, hey, yeah. let's, let's have a serious talk about taxation, yeah. you know, about business regulation in Hong Kong, and then trying to get some policies through. They just try to fight half heartedly. You know, kind of overarching big government things like standard working hours and minimum wage, and they don't do it very well. And then when it comes along, they vote for it because it's government policy. They don't want to be seen to be disagreeing with government. So, yep. anyways, so that's another thing. I don't think, you know, I, when I look at this current LegCo, I don't see improving the business environment as a priority for them yep. and maybe be a little bit obstructionist. So, so that's, that's the other, that's one of my concerns there. And I don't see the business community even trying. So, the final point on power? Uh, my final point on power? Has LegCo ceased to be a place where power is exercised? Like right now, it seems like it's a protest platform, right? When you look at the way the votes have come out, um, not much has changed in that the Democrats still have enough of a majority to block political reform, right? Because the, 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 the establishment side didn't get the two-thirds supermajority they need to change voting in Hong Kong. 
the Democrats have maintained their ability to block legislation that needs to be passed by both functional and geographical houses, right? So in that sense, no real change. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the government is going to be able to get through whatever budget they want. Uh, they're not going to be able to get the democratic reform through, but every other policy, they, it might get dragged out, it might get filibustered, but it will go through, mm. um, which means that people will have a platform to protest for the next, you know, four years. But are they going to be able to change anything? Yeah, I'm going back to my root of solution-based journalism okay. as a conclusion. I think if you are not happy, regardless of which side you are, yeah. if you're not happy with the legislative council, mm. Uh, who will be sworn in by October? Yeah, uh, you should look four years down the road. Yeah, and and I think my take is that we haven't talked about um, uh, DG, Ji Haidek, who got the oh, most yeah. votes in oh. the geographical constituency, right? Yeah, yeah, that one tiny point to me. Okay, yeah. um, wait. I think <clears throat> DG's phenomenon. Yeah, DG is in and Ricky Wong is out. Mm. Tells the business community. Mm. One important message yes. is that businessmen forget about rolling up your sleeves yeah. and become a politician. Voters somehow see through it. They want more specialized right. politicians. I'm all uh. in. I'm all in for politics. Yeah. They want people who have an all in attitudes. In politics, yeah, and if you have if you have projected a slight doubt, yeah, that it's only your side job, or maybe you're not putting your full forces in legislative council, true, then people may not vote for you. Yeah, like some people may still believe you, mm. but more and more people will think that the political scenario right now is very complicated. Yeah, and uh, there are filibusters all the time. We need your legislators. Yeah, to be available. Yeah, twenty four seven. So um, yeah, or, or we need yeah. your we need your politicians to be focused. Sure. So I think um, that's well, my that's my that's my analysis. I okay, mean, people are looking for more focused politicians. Yeah. And if the businessman does not have a full um, commitment okay. to the voters, yeah, they may lose. Let me, Regardless of how they popular, how how how's their popularity is. There's something to that, yeah. uh, and I think that you know it shouldn't say that. Oh, if you own or run a business, you should never run for Ledgeco. No, I'm not saying that. But, but you should prove to but, people that you're very committed. That you're very committed. So, for example, there's one other guy uh, that we did a profile on in Harbor Times, uh, Jeremy Tam, for the Civic Party, and he's not a lawyer. He's a pilot uh, with Cathay Pacific. I mean, the question is, and you know, he was like, yeah, if I run, and if I win. I will uh, quit if I find that I can't do my job properly as a legislator. So it, it's not clear if he's going to quit or not. Um, but he did get elected, so we'll just have to wait and see if he can handle being a pilot. And like, I mean, being a pilot, you work, you know. But actually, that hurts his votes. That's the <laughs> Civic Party votes in in Kalunis. Yeah, but he yeah. did okay. I mean, he got elected. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's that. The thing that I took away from the Eddie Chu phenomena, right? So just to remind everybody, he got more votes than any other. Uh, geographical candidate. 84,000. More King than 84,000, yeah. With this city, you know, what I'm wondering now is, is we see the Labor Party going down in flames, ADPL going down in flames, and we've got this Eddie Chu guy. You know what the city doesn't have that a lot of uh, Western democracies have? A Green Party. Green Party, yeah. I mean, this whole environmentalism thing is coming up. So, number one, I think uh, the question is, is it, is it time for a, a Green Party in Hong Kong? Uh, Actually, I, I've checked. The business registration for Green Party has already got by oh, someone. So somebody, somebody's got it. You somebody, know? yeah, got it. Registered. So, I check it. <laughs> so there's that. And then the second thing is, is this city fed up with the villagers? Oh, the, the, the indigenous. I mean, the indigenous peoples, you know, the village, not, not the YMCA village people. Um, but <laughs> the, yes, I mean, these, you know, the people basically, you know, everybody's figured out like, oh, our indigenous rights. Yeah, uh, legally they might have a leg to stand on. That's a whole other debate. But I mean, nobody thinks that these guys are protecting their traditional way of life. You know, it's all about the money and people fed up with it. And the city Q guy tapped into that. Um, you know, he was running the new territory. It's not like anybody in Hong Kong Island cares. But yeah. the new territories, people run up, rub up against that. And I mean, the, that's the second thing. Yeah. Are we going to get a Green Party? And are people in Hong Kong fed up with the, the indigenous people yeah. the, and this the whole whole house policy? The closest thing we have, mm. like the Green Party, mm. before Eddie Chu, mm. is Christine Lowe, actually. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll buy that. Yeah, but that was like a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a long, long time ago. So, so I'm curious to see. Are more candidates going to pick up on that? Because for most of the for for the most of the it's candidates, a new paradigm. Well, the, you know, come on. Who aside from him has a strong environmental platform? You know, there might be a couple of bullet points and some of the other guys' flyers, but it, they don't have like a platform. They don't but that issue is the green candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, have you seen his flyers? Have you seen his flyers? What some of the flyers. Like recycled tree bark or not tree bark? No. He wrote his platform on leaves. To distribute to people. Wow, it's <laughs> pretty over the top. It's a good photo op. Yep, it's, it's a good photo op. It's a lot of leaves. Though. I don't think he wrote eighty thousand leaves. I mean, well, not ev not everyone, not everyone. Yeah, but so but one of the gimmick. But but that show how <clears throat> I would say clever campaigning works. Yeah. So I to conclude. Yeah. I would urge people, regardless of whether strategic or not. Yep. My take is that vote for the clever and committed. Yeah. Yes. Clean, clever, and committed. Three C. Three Cs. Clean, clever, and committed. That's what Hong Kong wants right now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can I can I do a summation? Yes, please. So it's, it's been a long one. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, number one, Democrats finally listened to us, and because we were right, we were wrong, and they got more people through. Number two, uh, strategic voting has completely run amok in Hong Kong. It's a good sign that people care, but I think people are going to have to do a pretty deep rethink for the next election, right? And not forget this one. Uh, Power? Does Lexco really have any power? Yeah, but mm -mm. and as a result of that, uh, kind of that lack of power as a, as a governing body, as opposed to a protest platform, is has business given up on Lexco? So that's my last thing, and, and we discussed that as well. All right. So with that in mind, uh, thank you for watching our show. Yep. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, hey, what, Andrew? Hey, thanks for working on the solutions, Vincent. Bye. Bye. -bye.